What's up idols? It's CC Lesson 3. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. So when last we spoke, we talked about the ultimate K-pop fangirl dream of dating an idol. But today we're going to talk about something that's increasingly more attainable. Dating a normal, real Korean dude. Sure, we all want our opas, or in my case, Namdong Sing. I am 31. But international and interracial dating in Korea is becoming increasingly more common, popular, and normalized. And one of the reasons I wanted to revisit this topic is because earlier this week, I met up with the sweetest girl. We met on Bumble BFF, and she was telling me how she just moved to the UK a few months ago with her boyfriend. She's Korean, he's English, and they met while he was teaching English over there in Korea. And they've been together for years. So while we were together, we talked a lot about dating, and she asked me what my experience was, she told me what her experience is like, why she doesn't really like Korean guys all that much anymore, more. and I was telling her oh really because foreign girls really seem to like Korean guys these days and yes dating is the number one thing we've talked about the most on my channel by far over the years but it is something that you guys always still want to talk about and I am all for it the tea is always juicy but it's important to revisit this because it's something that is forever changing constantly evolving whether it's new laws more open-minded people different opportunities all sorts of reasons these relationships are becoming more normal these days so let's talk about it some more we're going to cover are foreigners attractive in korea korean guys versus western guys what's the differences what are the similarities my personal experience is what's changing and why i think it's all happening so fast but before we do dive in if you want to see more story times that i can't put on youtube because they're mostly sexual in nature and that will get demonetized on youtube check out my patreon like the video i just uploaded today for example it's about a girl who was in a bar and she met up with a guy for a hookup and they were interrupted and it's so complicated here's a clip Please. we were in itaewon and he said he lived near snu it's like seoul national university it was going to be about 10 to 15 minutes in the taxi we got to his place and it was nice. Nice view, pretty big rooms. He told me he lived alone while we were in the bar, but when I got there, I saw a lot of shoes gathered by the door and on the shoe rack. Some were women's shoes. Now I knew he had a girlfriend or wife, so I didn't question it. I don't know why he was lying about it, but I didn't think about it again. We literally fumbled in the door and started kissing as soon as we were both inside. We started taking our clothes off and you know how it goes. We go to his bedroom and get started. He's already condomed up and inside when I hear the front door keypad and then the door open and close. We froze and got quiet. He went for his clothes and shushed me. I was so scared. On Trust me, that's a wild one. Like it was kind of hard to read because she admits what she does is wrong and it's hard not to judge her, but we all make mistakes. So live and let live. Anyway, so for this video, the first thing I want to talk about is are foreigners attractive in Korea? And it's something we've talked about a lot, in my opinion. Yes, not every foreigner, but a lot of people are quick to discount themselves or exclude themselves from a conversation because they're like, oh, I'm a foreigner or oh, I'm black. I'm Indian. I'm brown. I have darker skin. They won't like me. And they assume automatically they won't be attractive. That is not the case. While living in Korea, I've met so many different people from different countries, from the military who come for teaching, and they come from all over the world to visit and travel. And it gave me a very unique opportunity to talk with these people like on a more personal level because when you're a foreigner, you stick out together. So I could be in the club with my friends and a girl who's visiting from Scotland will come over or a girl who's visiting from South Africa will come over or a girl who's visiting from India will come over and we all just start talking and it's just that easy in Korea. There's a lot of stories that we all have in common. Like do you know how often it is and how common it is to just be walking down the street minding your business and some guy or Ajima will just say oh yep oh so pretty. I saw this reel the other day where a girl was trying to do an outfit check like she set up her camera and she was about to walk back so she could show off her outfit and an Ajima walking by I was like, oh, yep, da. Things like that happen all the time. And she was a foreigner and she was not white. The first time I remember that happening to me, I was in Jeju and it was like the start of the second term as a teacher. And we had like new talk student intake. And there was this guy who was like, we were flirting or whatever. He had just come to be a teacher. And I like to go for walks and stuff. So we walked by the ocean and it was like a late night walk. It was so nice. And then we went to the roof. At anyway, I was walking to meet him and out front of a GS25 or a CU, there were these two old Ajishis just drinking, minding their business, talking to each other. And it was like, ah, oh, wiggle again. Oh, yep, da. To each other, not to me. They don't know that I could understand that, but I was just like, oh, <laughs> that, that was nice. Did not expect that. There'll be a lot of old people, especially. <laughs> 
where I'm just on the bus and like an old lady will be staring at me, some Ajima, and she just pulls out sweets and candies and tells me I'm pretty and hands me candies and goes about her day. I remember when we were in Jeju and we were going to an island south of Jeju. It's like the southernmost point of South Korea. I can't remember what the island is called. Like Soando, Soado, something Do. Not Dokdo. And we had just had some jajamyeon because apparently it's like really popular there. And we were about to board and these two younger guys, like they, they're looking around and they looked at me and go, oh, and acted like they were shocked and it kind of caught me off guard. And he was like, so beautiful. And I was like, oh, thank you. And then he just kept it moving. Those type of compliments hit differently because they're not looking for anything. They just wanted to tell you you were pretty. Basically, this is a long winded way of saying I know foreigners of all different shapes, sizes, racial backgrounds, nationalities who have Korean husbands and wives. Like it does not matter, especially these days. It's mattering less and less. What? It's mattering? Bruh, how the fuck was I an English teacher? What I meant to say was it matters less and less, not it's mattering less and less. Forgive my grammar. Now the next thing I wanted to get into, I know that people tend to put Korean men on a pedestal because of K-dramas and K-pop. Let's be real, they all do look incredibly gorgeous on television and in our phones and on our laptops, I get it. When I tell you this man is so fine, oh God. And I mean, I hate to disappoint you guys, but they are no different to the men that you are used to. Oh no, no. <laughs> They're not any better and they're not any worse. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some differences that I personally have noticed in Korea. And I think a lot of girls who have dated in Korea will notice as well. Something honestly that I think a lot of women appreciate more about Korean guys. And that's the fact that they are so well groomed <laughs> and they take care of themselves and their appearance and their skin and their hair and their clothes and things like that. Things where in the Western world would be perceived as like metro or possibly gay. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. I am an ally. But I like how in Korea, I feel like guys have this freedom to wear a little bit of like lip tint or some BB cream if they want to improve how their skin looks. Make sure their haircuts are always fire and fresh and styled clothes are always fresh and i've said this many times on my channel over the years but when we're talking about similarities and differences it's one of like the main things that i've noticed and i feel like that is changing these days because even out here in the west you see like the pretty boys on tiktok and the guys on youtube who go viral because they're really pretty but yeah you know they'll go and get their eyebrows microbladed like a lot of us ladies do they care about their the, the nitty gritty of it all and they're allowed to without society judging them as being like questionable which is weird it's always been weird to me that taking care of yourself as a male means you might be gay the fit now don't get me wrong walking around in south korea you will not see the average korean guy wearing as much makeup as you see on tv like as the actors and singers but there is a little something something there a lot of the time and i like when guys have like a proper skincare routine like my boyfriend has a proper skincare routine he gets excited when he orders new products and stuff i'm like you're, you're in this for the long haul. <laughs> you very smart. You gotta plan the future for your skin, you know? Don't let yourself age like milk. Oh! Somebody! Oh! He no. needs some milk! And you know how in the West, when you like a guy, you're just getting to know a person, both parties, men and women, they're like, mm, I shouldn't text, I shouldn't respond right away because they'll think I'm too eager. Over there, it's the opposite. If you like someone, Pamogoso, did you eat well? Chaojaso? Did you sleep well? Like they're on it. They, you don't gotta be subtle. If you like someone, you can talk to them. It's okay. <laughs> now, now, don't get me wrong. You do get a lot of the same BS you experience with the men in your own home countries, I'm sure. The ghosting, the cheating, the gaslighting. I mean, at the end of the day, we all are human. Personally, I think what the main difference is with Korea is a lot of people don't expect it because of what they've seen in Korean dramas and the music that K-pop idols make. They all seem so sweet and so romantic and so caring and they look so innocent and harmless. And I think that combined with the fact that in the West, Asian men have traditionally and stereotypically been demasculated and or emasculated, that's the word. <laughs> And you know, the nerdy, soft, feminine type. So you don't really expect that sort of toxic masculine, I will lie to you and ghost you and gaslight you and cheat on you stuff. It's all the same girl, I promise you. And again, I like, oh, and again, I like, oh. You could, you'll do, you, you want, you, you could do. What the fuck are you talking about? When I make these videos, a lot of people tell me like, why do you spend so much time shitting on men? I don't shit on men, I shit on bad men. There is a clear difference. If you feel offended by what I'm saying, you may need to look in the mirror and change the way you live your life. Change starts with a man in a mirror, Michael Jackson said it best.
I hope that you're still recording my voice. The primary reason I make these videos and these story times and I love hearing from you guys and your dating stories, by the way, email me at cclesson3 at yahoo.com if you want to share your story, good or bad. It's not like I'm like, oh, I only want to hear the bad. I want to hear the good too. We love love here. But it's mainly to let you guys know that don't go to Korea and expect the opa you saw in a Korean drama. Like, expect Justin that you knew from your hometown. <laughs> I started my channel back in 2018. Well, I started in like 2012, but I didn't start uploading until 2018. And initially, all my story times were about me. My experiences on twin Twinder. My experiences on Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, Meef even. Ugh things like that. The fact that we went clubbing every weekend and there was always some guy trying to pick you up and take you to a love motel. So let me tell y'all, I have lived a life. <laughs> it's just my personal preference, but somewhere along the line, because when I was like in middle school, early high school, I was going through like a strictly white boy phase. I had just had my first boyfriend in middle school. He was a black guy named Carlton. He was cool. And then like the first two boyfriends I had in high school were black. And then I dated a white guy in high school. That only lasted for like a day because everybody did not approve of our relationship. So we broke up after a day of seeing each other in real life. Uni, I was a lot more experimental. And that's when I started to date Asian guys. And ever since then, it's just my personal preference. Physically, I am more attracted to Asian men. That does not mean I exclusively date Asian men. Even last year when I was looking for Bay and looking for someone who was worth my time, most of the guys I went out with were not Asian, but the one who was happened to be more serious with me and now we're in a relationship together. C'est la vie. Why did I even bring that up? Oh yeah, personal experiences. <laughs> I was in the clubs a lot and on dating apps a lot and you do get a lot of attention from Korean guys that way but not in the way that a lot of us might be hoping for especially if we just want romance and if we've seen Korean dramas and watch k-pop videos and come backstages and performances and variety shows and they all seem so sweet and gentlemanly and prince-like instead a lot of them are on the same fuckboy mentality I was used to in the states after a while that gets very if it starts to feel personal you know it, it's I was very insecure in South Korea because I really was like, damn, I'm really just not worth getting to know. Like, they see me and they just want to fuck. They don't want to get to know me. That hurt my feelings. I always thought I was a super cool girl. And you know, back then, a lot of the times I would always hear that, oh, you're a foreigner, so no one really sees you for seriousness, like serious relationships long term. They just want to have some fun with you. And that's changing a lot these days. Like, I was just talking with i'm not gonna say her name but the girl that i met from bumble bff and she was saying how a lot of her korean friends seek non-korean men and aspire to leave korea <laughs> which i find funny because i know there's so many foreign girls who are flocking to korea and looking for a path inward to the borders of korea <laughs> Anyway, another reason this girl was, I could tell she was such a real one and we're gonna be really good friends. She was able to acknowledge a lot of the double standards that we as foreign women get. For example, her boyfriend, uh, English teacher in Korea for a few years, and no one ever really questioned his motive for going to Korea and staying for so long. You know, it's like, oh, he's a man who moves for work and travel and experience. That's a valid reason. But when it's a girl, so often do people accuse us of moving to date. Ain't nobody got time for that. Now, when she said that, I felt so seen. <laughs> Do you know how often people over the years have commented, you know how cringe it is to move countries just to find a man? Who's, what are you even talking about? Like, the fuck are you on about? I moved to Korea because I wanted to live in Korea. I wanted to see what it was like to teach. I wanted to see what it was like to be paid to travel, essentially. I've seen so many vlogs showing how lit and fun and safe it is in Korea. I wanted to experience it for myself. Of course, dating is a fun little side quest, but that is not the purpose. Like, who's going to tell them we have mad Koreans in America? They come for work, for study, for living, especially on the campus I came from. I went to Rutgers University. Hella Koreans on my campus. So no, sorry. Don't think about it too much, too much. Onward. When she said that, I just really appreciated that because that is such a struggle. There's so many girls who tell me that so many people assume. It is so funny to me how men think everything we do is for them and for their attention. <laughs> what we wear, how we style our hair, where we go, where we live. And it makes me wonder, like, is that how y'all feel? Because the pot often calls the kettle black, you know? Maybe women just live in men's head rent free and they think it's that way reciprocated but it's not. When I was talking with this girl in the park, sorry, random thoughts racing through my head right now. It just made me realize how common 
interracial and international relationships are becoming in Korea. Like I've seen the stats, I, I see the numbers on the rise, but hearing from a girl who was also in an interracial relationship and talking about how her friends perceived it, how her family accepted the situation, I was like, wow, things are really changing these days. Like even in the comments of this video, you might find that a lot of people will be like, oh yeah, my husband's Korean, it's no big deal. It's not a big deal anymore, which you love to see it. You love to see change and, and just love above everything else you know so yeah i love talking about this topic especially when i get like another person's insight and and i can hear things from another person's perspective like it was funny she <laughs> she was like yeah it's so interesting that so many foreign girls want to date korean men because i'm done i'm over it and she's a girl who spent her whole life in korea right and even when she saw me she was like oh whoa like you're so pretty like a lot of people think that being not korean automatically makes you ugly to koreans and that's not true a lot of people also assume that if you're not white you will be perceived as ugly in korea and again that is not true now i do acknowledge i am a light-skinned black woman and honestly the interracial couples i've seen in korea it's usually someone who's not like racially ambiguous like you can tell she is a black woman she has like box braids or her natural curly hair out darker skin and she's walking hand in hand with a korean guy and the same is definitely true for black men especially in the hongdae area i feel like hongdae is where i see most interracial couples i mean it makes sense it's like a college district people in college tend to be more open-minded by nature but yeah like i said we were just talking about parasocial relationships and Korean idols and Korean actors and stuff and I feel like a lot of people don't realize how quickly things are changing in Korea because you cannot read a headline about Korea that without seeing the fact that they are dealing with a birthing crisis and they're getting desperate even though they refuse to acknowledge the very clear and present issues I don't know if that means people are becoming more open-minded to their kids having babies with foreigners, if it means having babies. I don't know what it is, but people seem to be a lot more accepting of international and interracial relationships. And even all the story times on my channel, like though they don't always tell me their race, I know that they are all foreigners. Some tell me they're black, some tell me they're white, some tell me they're mixed. Some people don't tell me at all. A lot of people don't tell me because they want to be anonymous. So if you do move to Korea, and you find yourself getting lonely or whatever or wishing you could date then you should you'd be surprised at how many of them may want to talk to you too but they're shy about it i've heard that a lot especially the video like was it two weeks ago where the guy wrote the email in about how oftentimes we want to talk to you guys but we think that y'all don't want us so we don't say shit to y'all either it's me and you now i've been waiting Think I wanna make a move Don't be shy, say what's up Anyway, I never get tired of talking about this so I'll be here all day if I don't end this now So, if you do wanna see some of these story times Of interracial couples and interracial dating International dating that I've been talking about so much throughout this video Then please check out the playlist that's about to pop up on the end screen We have so many, so many No mana. Thank you guys so much for watching If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe And I will see you guys next time Annyeong